Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Caves of Cud, where we might be about to die. I might really be about to die. Tough is tough. That's why they call it that. And then also, uh, this character is not the most resilient of all the characters we've ever played. The, just be, having to be in melee with people is pretty rough. Uh, so I am at... wait, I'm at 49 health. Huh. I, it doesn't look like I've taken any damage here. I mean, it's hard to know, because the whole thing is filled with the word, the name Halep once Hearthstone of Geologists over and over again. Maybe he hit us already? So, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, because of the fact that, like I said, the melee characters are definitely weaker than ranged characters, and also uh, we have very few escape tools, I think my plan here is going to be, let's shoot at this guy and then run away if he if it doesn't look like he took enough damage from us shooting him. We do have this fine burst fire rifle, so... Wow, no, that absolutely, that just murdered the entire hell out of him. Hold on, how much damage did I do there? Uh, I hit him for 16, and he just immediately died. And then we hit him for 12 more after he... Can I page up? Can I scroll up this? Nope, page up does not do the thing I want. Okay, we might have hit him with two rounds, potentially, before he died, but in any case, that's that tells us he does not have a lot of health. Alright, so we got another one. I think he probably uh, behooves us to... Unfortunately, he's a little bit harder to hit, the way he's positioned. What is that? It looks like an ocarina with legs. It's a traips... It's a mortar. Oh, it's a mortar. This slender, spidery robot jaunts lightly. Oh, that's adorable. Carrying a single slender tube which trails a thin wisp of smoke. He is equipped with some strange tubes. I am equipped with this fucking gun. What's up, nerd? This is actually, like, really effective. Alright, it turns out the Age of Axes is over. The Age of... Weird Artifact X11 is what I just picked up. Let's identify them. Uh, those are missiles. Those, <laughs> those are missiles. That guy was a missile launcher. Uh, so that's... Have you ever been really scared for yourself in the past? Because that just happened to me. Uh, I think we can afford to drop some of this armor. Like, I don't need to be carrying all this ring mail. Yeah, drop all my ring mail. What am I, what am I even doing here? Well, the good news is there's a lot of XP to be earned in this place. Is that a different kind of creature, or is it just a amoeba that's covered in oil? Oh, he's a black gel. He has an oozing pseudopod, and this is a brown gel. His pseudopod is merely sludgy. It's not quite oozing yet. And this is just a, a green gel. That's not an amoeba at all. Okay, so this place is like... It's, it's scary here. Is what I'm learning. What is our agility? It's 20? So we have some aim. My suspicion is we will not successfully hit at this distance, but I guess we get three chances. Nope, I have repeatedly failed to penetrate the armor of the wall. Okay, I got one. 450 XP. I mean, we have a huge amount of ammo, right? So I, we can just... We can just refuse to engage in any kind of remotely fair combat. Uh, what have they left on the ground? Green goo. Adds self-poisoning effects to cooked meals. Oh, wonderful. Black ooze, which is self-diseasing. Gooey sludgy black ooze. Self-poisoning and self-diseasing, in case you really wanted to go for it. And then, of course, you got your brown sludge. Some stairs leading downward, and a guy we can kill. Let's do that. Wait, let's try again. Okay, I hit him once. Oh, dear. I destroyed that door. I really showed that door who's boss. Uh-oh. Are those spores? There we go. Finally got him. What is your deal? Plastronoid, and member of the shrewd lamb of grazing hedonist cult. A gang of tiny plastic gyroscopes undulates toward you. For what purpose were they originally designed to serve? The echo of that memory has long since waned in the chrome halls of Kud. Uh, he is equipped with a bunch of gimbals. Well, what if I shot him a whole bunch of times? What if I reloaded my gun and then shot him a whole bunch of times? It doesn't take much. It turns out that uh, in Cud, as in real life, very few beings are resistant to the to the bullet. The mighty bullet. We're just going to go north instead of continuing to head east here because I'm afraid to step in the goo. I don't know what will happen, but it can't be good. Are you just a normal 
Yes, you're just a normal Snapjaw Hunter. Why is why is a normal Snapjaw Hunter here in this place? I mean, I guess we saw that map, right? We or we saw as we were approaching, we were fighting uh, Snapjaws in an area that looked much like this. Ooh, I want the carbide hammer. Give me that. So I guess all we had to do was continue walking a little bit, and we would have found our way to the place. I'm really worried about stepping in the black the black ooze, you know? Uh, let's go up, over, three, and then down. What What is this that these dudes have left behind? Just normality gas. You know, your everyday, totally normal gases. Here's the thing. Most people don't describe themselves as normal all the time, like even if they do think of themselves as normal. And all I'm saying is, I'm judging this gas. Alright. Up. One, two, three. Down. Onto the stairs. I stepped in the ooze. I don't seem to be dead. Ooh, boy. Is this a good idea? Pass by a door. Enter some kind of arcology or something. What are the walls here made out of? Marble. Snails and coral were crushed on the geologic press, painted into ribbons of impurity, and polished along the ideal plane. Yeah. Guess that's what <laughs> I guess that's what marble is. Is that okay, it's just a light fixture. It's flickering in a way that's real creepy though. What am I even doing here? Were we were we looking for something in particular, or was the quest just to come here? Have we done the whole deal? Yeah, we have. We, we don't really need to be here anymore. That said, obviously, we'll keep looking around. I have this extremely good rifle that I have no training in the operation of. How many skill points am I sitting on? Is it a lot? It's not a lot, but... Might be a good time to take some basic rifle skills, is what I'm thinking. Since it looks like we're all of a sudden using our rifle a lot more. Yeah, see, I could pick up bow and rifle. And then also kick back. That seems alright. I know we were talking about Tinker and stuff, and I still want Tinker, but... Okay, a bunch of the spooky dread plants. Let's chop these down. Also, is that a cave spider? Just like a normal cave spider? Okay. Uh, do I even want a dreadroot tuber? Honestly, I don't know. Let's have at these guys real quick, should be no problem. <laughs> that cave spider corpse is trash. Uh, alright. It's weird how much... How much, like, normal low-level stuff we're encountering in this place. Ooh, a quartz baboon. Once quartz crystallized on the skin of a monkey bathing in the steaming pools of the subterrane. He was sculpted by the rasp of pressure and the hand of time, as are we all. And now his throated vowels bounce toward the ear of the void. That, that's a very impressive uh, description of the way a monkey sounds. Okay, so this baboon's going to kick my ass. No, go this way. But not if I just run away like a huge coward. I mean, we've broken his line of sight, right? There's no way he's still chasing us. Oh dear, I've been engulfed. This guy is actually... No, sorry, I'm looking at myself. I was going to say, actually, he's friendly. No, he's not really friendly. I am attempting to cleave him. I hit for some damage. I'm taking damage. It's a little hard to tell. Like, what's his state? No, not me. Yeah, I can't actually tell. So I don't want to, like, dismember. Because I'm afraid I'll hit myself. I don't know what the rules are here. I'm taking... I mean, I'm hitting for a lot. So let's see. We hit for 8 there, and I definitely didn't take damage. I didn't take 8, rather. Uh, he is really kicking my ass, though. Uh, what if I... What if I yonder cane? Like, I kind of want to leave, right? Then he ate the yonder cane. Space select. Am I allowed to just like, go wherever I want? Eat the yonder cane. It tastes like far away. You are now hungry and wet. Okay, so yonder cane just teleports you to any space on the current map? 
That seems real good, actually. I'm gonna rest until healed? No, I'm not. You see, a chain gun turret tinker. Oh, do I? That's the wrong button. What I was trying to press is kill with rifle. Okay, he's he's hurt. There we go. Lots of XP to be had in here. Can I please rest until healed? I did it. Nope. Not quite rested until healed. This blue gel is getting dangerously close. Uh, I'm going to go upstairs. He may well follow us. But my plan was to get up here where we know there's a little bit of room to run and then sprint away if I had to. Looks like we're cool. Alright, dangerous place. Probably not a good place for us to hang out at this level. Although, we did, during our time there, manage to gain quite a bit of XP quite quickly. And really without that much danger. I did have to spend my Yonder Cane, but... the I mean, obviously the huge benefit there is that now I know what Yonder Cane does. Oh, hey buddy. How you doing? Uh, he had a burnt capacitor. Now it is my burnt capacitor. Yeah, in fact, we were on this map, weren't we? This is this is the map we came in on. Uh, how am I doing on carry weight right now? Alright, let's get out of here. So now what? That was my big that was my big exploration thing. We encountered these ruins. I didn't really want to go back to these ruins. Let's head back in the direction of um, a place where we can sell things. Maybe the stilt. Oh, we are lost. And there's goat folk and stuff here. I wonder if the goat folk will fight. The leech is not hostile. I wonder if the goat folk will fight the sightless way guy. Yep, <laughs> sure will. That didn't go the way I wanted it to. Alright. Well, I am now just like way in on this rifle. Actually, I feel like I'm doing a pretty bad job here. Given the number of projectiles I'm getting to fire, you'd think I would have landed more hits. Let's take a moment and reload this. I mean, we have a ton of ammunition, but it's not infinite. And I know we're not very accurate at this range, but that's the kind of goat folk that has a lot of grenades. So I was kind of thinking it would be best to, you know, handle him at a distance. A couple of carbide short swords, some chain gauntlets, you know how they get down. Boy, tough dude. Okay, we got there eventually. Reload. We got our kickback and everything. Like, this is... This is going remarkably poorly, considering the advantages that we should have in this, uh, this style of combat. Alright. How about I dismember? Uh, did that work? I did not penetrate the goat folk's armor. I'm kinda getting my butt kicked here. Okay. Chop successful. This one is at full health still. Then I'm debating how much running away I want to do. We should probably sprint. At the very least, reload, and then start in with the kickback. Ow. How would you still hit me? Bad shooting. I hit that ice frog, though. Showed that, showed that guy who's boss. Oh, more goat folk. More dangerous goat folk. And a legendary. What's your deal? Ah, Twice Talker, the goat folk shaman of Clan White Tongue. A braid of roasted frog skin stretches taut over his swollen pectorals and fastens a satchel to his hip. This description is a little thirstier than a lot of them have been. His hooves are stained with naphtali blood. Spittle flies from his bleating mouth into a tuft of hair beneath his chin. Like I said, thirsty. Uh... Get me out of here. I wouldn't mind killing this one that we already started work on. <laughs> Provided that he can be killed by mortal weaponry. Okay. The sower is after us. This is getting a little real. Oh boy. Yeah, this is real bad, actually. And there's a some kind of machine over here and all kinds of scary slug monsters, and it's all it's all just very bad news. I'm taking a lot of damage. I've been I've been hit with his massive horns. So we don't really have anything. Uh I have some grenades, I suppose. 
We have a love injector. If you try to inject this guy with love, just make him back the hell off. Can't use a recoiler when you're being swamped by enemies. I'm going to hit the Urbanostrum injector. I don't feel great about it, but I think if we don't do this, there's a really good chance we die. Honestly, even having done it, there's like a non-zero. Alright, my plan here is going to be... I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a plan. We've lost, uh, or we've regained our bearings, so if we can find a moment where we're not actively being murdered, we could we could try to get out of here. Boy, I have 101 move speed, and they're not only keeping up with me, but they're actually, like, they're catching up with me and hitting me a lot, which bums me out. Hello, Albino Ape. Okay, Albino Ape does not like goat folk. It is fine with me, though. Please just distract him. Please just distract him long enough for me to get away. Come on. Oh, he's still chasing me. As you can tell, my plan is basically just to mash that button until it works. He's really doing a good job of keeping up. We are only 19 rounds off of having another sprint. God, we're being pursued now by a, by one of the grenade throwers, which makes me real nervous. Oh, hey, and there's like legendary Naftali over there and stuff. Oh, go around. We're so close. We're so close. Uh, sprint. We should be able to lose him now. Naftali, you're shooting at me, but that's a lot less dangerous. And of course, we run directly into another one. Go this way. Damn it. Alright, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna go back up to this screen, but we're gonna do it over on this side. I do, in fact, spot a Dromad Caravan. That's a good point. It's just, <laughs> it's just a real nightmare kind of situation. Reload the gun. Uh-oh. 17. That means we're almost out of bullets. And this goat folk sower has chased us successfully. I'm going to dismember him. We're not getting away very effectively. He has a carbide battle axe and he hits me so hard. God. God damn it. Well, the thing that I thought was going to be hard about that turned out to be not a problem at all. Like, the, the, the place itself. But boy, just moving around on the map is a real nightmare. We survived for 9,750 turns there. Alright, well, I don't exactly know what we're going to be doing with our next character. Okay, I figured it out. Here's what I'm thinking about this one. The number one thing I learned from that last character is that even if you are objectively very powerful, and I think that character was once we got all of our equipment and skills going, um, it's just terrifying to be reliant on melee. Like, right at the, at the end there, when, when things started getting real, we transitioned into rifles that we had very little skill with because trying to kill those guys who were just covered in scalpels via melee axe combat is just too scary. So... We're going back to more of a gun-type character, and this is a gun-type character that we haven't tried yet. You'll notice our subtype is Eunuch, which is a weird name for the bundle of uh, mechanics that that represents. You'll be surprised to hear the mecha mechanics don't really have much to do with being a Eunuch. That was the, the subtype that was most appropriate for a rapid-fire dual pistols type guy. I think this could be a lot of fun, and it's a thing we haven't tried yet. So our cybernetics here, the rapid-release finger flexors... Uh, reduce the quickness cost of firing pistols by 25%, and we know that there's stuff that does similar things in the pistol skill group. Uh, we should have lots and lots of skill points, being true kin plus having 22 intelligence. We have the agility to operate the guns, we have the intelligence to do some tinkering, a little bit of toughness and a little bit of willpower, hopefully to cover for the fact that we don't have mental mirror or anything like that. And we'll just try to solve all of our problems by staying really far away from them with this guy. We're going to be a little bit more fragile, and we're not going to have the escape tools that we had on, like, the guy who the guy who had Force Wall or anything, but I at least have some hope here. I think one thing that we're learning is you really can't... It's just there aren't enough good escapes to make a character who can get out of whatever trouble, right? The world's too dangerous, and defense is a fine defense, but I kind of think offense is a better defense, generally speaking. So... 
let's get to it. I think I want to start in the desert canyons a lot. I'm really enjoying having wayfaring early, um, getting to visit all those ruins and stuff. You get to find a lot of cool things very quickly. There's lots of interesting opportunities to earn XP. And of course, the game gets to generate our, our name because it's been doing such a good job so far. It takes this responsibility very seriously, which I appreciate. On the 19th, 19th of Ubu'ut, you arrive at the village of Telitum. Tylitum, I don't know. What's the story with this village? Well, I can see... Is that their warden? Blue usually means warden, right? That is, in fact, their warden. He's just a, one of those scary guys. A salt hopper? He is admired by convalescence kinfolk because he defended their village as well. What a hero. And you're just an apple farmer? A pig farmer. Sorry, my mistake. Find Irishur or Sensible Isla for work. And what is this? This is a shrine, a desecrated shrine, to Artaxerduct I, the Viridian Hourglass. At twilight under a rare and Viridian sky, that does seem rare, the people of Hapir saw an image on the horizon that looked like an hourglass bathed in Viridian, and etc. We've... I, the et in etc. is already and, so that was a little repetitive. Um... What's your deal? You look like you're probably the Tinker. Uh, Irishur, this is one of the people who we were told to talk to, though. Friend, there's an errand you could do for me. Recently, I visited Alana and saw a pure humble pie. Like a literal humble pie. For the games we play under the Beetle Moon, I would love to acquire it. I'm willing to pay for your assistance if you salvage it for me. But it's a pie? I guess if he visited really recently, there might still be some pie left. I mean, listen, I'll try. I will give it my level best. My friend, I will attempt to acquire for you this pie. Uh, what are these things? This one, this stone column, has a scene from the life of the village on it. A scene from the history of the village. The foulness of Artaxerduct I was revealed to the people of Teletum through those who opposed the bounty of the earth and warm meals. Ah, so there was some sort of religious force opposed to warm meals and also growing things. And that's why their statue of our tax reduct is, uh, is desecrated, I see. No, wait, sorry. Un unlock. Why would it assume I didn't want to look at this? No moon shall be la lauded in Tylatome without lifting a mug of convalescence. Or a pie. Also, pies are good for moon celebrations. Alright, let's talk to the guy from the stilt. Take on the quest to go visit that. We'll have a look at our inventory in a second here. This is a different desecrated shrine. Does it have a different scene on it? It does. Okay, he traps someone in a clock. Weird thing to do. I guess I could see why you would not want to uh, worship a guy like that. Let's go have a chat with their warden real quick. Uh, of course, as always, we do love the Fellowship of Wardens. We're not going to learn anything of value from you, though. What is in this building? Just a, Just an oven? An oven and a table. Okay, where is the other person in town who gives quests? We're just looking for a person who has... Ah, there we go. Unusual coloration is what I was about to say. Peace, friend. Nomadic living is no way to bless finding livestock for those who love artistry. I guess that's true. I, oh, how I wish I could understand what you are even talking about. Speak to Sensible Isla. Uh, well, can we trade? You have nothing. Okay. Oh, we should look at our stuff. I don't actually even know what we're... Hold on. Let me, let me try to find Sensible Isla first. Perhaps uh, they are sensibly avoiding interaction with weird strangers who just wander into town. Sensible... Oh, there's a door up here I missed. Are you in this weird passageway? No, nobody is in this weird passageway. Huh. Where is another... Okay, maybe down here? Where is another person of interest? I'm just gonna hit auto-explore. Let's try to find a person whose sprite is an unusual color. I mean, because there's always two quest givers, right? Hold on a second. These guys are not the same sprite. Are you both just farmers? You're a normal pig farmer, and you're a normal pig farmer. Okay. And you're not useful to me. We already talked to you and got the got the work that needs doing. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know where the other quest giver is. I mean, you're the Dromad Merchant. You're, yeah, you're not Isla. You're Toll. Well, I guess there's a couple of tiles, a couple of spaces up here that we haven't actually seen yet. Oh, okay, there we go. That's a person who's an unusual color. Friend, welcome to the village of Talatum. Here you will find Shade and Vittle, along with so many different pronunciations of our name. As long as you are respectful, you may drink of our fresh water and quench your thirst. Well, what if you drank of my fresh water and quenched your thirst? Huh, buddy? My reputation with hermits has gone down. That's a little bit of a shame. Alright, let's learn Wayfaring right away, because it seems to be awesome. And then, is there work around here? Traveler, we've been speaking to aspirants, and we learned about a nearby location forgotten to our people. A Snapjaw Fort. What riches might this place hide? It's a great question. Precious metals? The bounty of the earth? An altar to finding livestock for those who love artistry? We must know. I thought you guys hated the bounty of the earth. If you pinpoint it for us, we will reward your work. We hear it's located somewhere between one and five parasangs south of some forgotten ruins. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, I mean, I'll try. So they're going to tell me where the ruins are, and then we're just going to have to wander south of them? A parasang is a screen of space, right? I think. They started me off with a high explosive grenade. Uh, it looks like no ammunition. We have a chem cell. Some classic injectors. Nothing to actually put our chem cell in. A different grenade in our, in our inventory here. I think I'd rather have the high explosive grenade in that slot for emergencies. And then some very basic stuff. Steel dagger, which seems like a pretty okay dagger to start with. Uh, our starting skill set does include some small blade stuff. So, swift reflexes, bonus DV against missile attacks, spry, just bonus DV. Uh, we get to start with the pistol skills that give you extra accuracy with pistols, and weak spotter is, okay, double crit chance, seems pretty good. Uh, this we want really badly. Of course, we're going to need a second pistol <laughs> before it's actually useful. Uh, no accuracy for firing pistols while running. I'm assuming that means while sprinting? So I don't think running is actually a game mechanics thing, right? An agility-based chance to disarm your opponent when you score a hit with a pistol. Seems good. Better crits to go with our more crits. Uh, this thing, just shoot real fast all the time forever. Uh, and this thing, which is even more the thing I just said. And then we also started with Short Blade Expertise for the extra accuracy here. Uh, and you make primary hand attacks with Short Blades as if your quickness were 25% higher. So this is a very quickness-focused character. And then Hobble, which allows you to attempt to reduce an enemy's move speed. That horrible sound is my chair, by the way. That's what happens if I move even slightly while sitting in this chair. Uh, I need to probably get a new chair. So we know Mind's Compass. Travel on the Overland map twice as quickly, regain your bearings more easily. Okay, so you don't actually get more of a chance of seeing cool things until you take the Wilderness lore parts of Wayfaring. Fortunately, they're very cheap. And we should get lots and lots and lots of skill points. So we have three bullets in our revolver, and that's it. That's all of the bullets. Hi, I'm going to need to purchase some bullets from you. I would love to purchase literally all of them. Also, I would love to have a look at your painted and engraved objects. Deep in the wilds of the astrologist quarter of Ekarana, our taxoduct the third, who presumably was less hated by this village, stumbled upon a clan of trees performing a secret ritual. Because of her mirrored eyes, they furiously rebuked her and declared her a villain to their kind. Hey, that makes sense to me. I don't judge. And then this... Our taxoduct the fourth... Acting against the prohibition on the practice of burying prisms under the earth, our taxerduct the fourth led an army to the gates of the hamlet of Sushur. She sacked it and slaughtered its citizens, forcing them to change its name to our taxerduct city. Okay, so maybe it's like a whole family line of people who just totally suck. Uh, do you have for me... Ooh, you do have another painted object. I was kind of hoping that dude was going to have another pistol for us, although I don't know that we would have been able to afford it right now anyway. In 1663 BR, Polyhim III laid waste to all of the glassblower's quarter of Kibamu, kidnapping the smartest children from the homes of newly sentient beings and baboons. She became known as the Kibamu Sorrow. Okay, so we've discovered a location from that one. Usually get a quite a lot of XP for pursuing those, and then, yeah, nothing terribly amazing beyond that, except for a water skin that's holding lava. 
somehow. Very expensive. <laughs> Very expensive, that one. All right. I want those bullets, and I will gladly trade you... Why do I even have walking sticks? Do I want these? I'm going to sell him these. Is there anything else that we want to get from him right this second? We already have a steel knife. He has some armor. But the stuff we would want is pretty expensive. This is... Plus one agility. Boy. That's pretty good. We can't afford that right now, but that's definitely a thing we'll be coming back for later. Yeah, I mean, he has some good, some good gear. We'll come back for stuff later. We'll just make this trade right now. He'll give us some water. Alright, reload the gun. And hopefully, this gun is going to be enough to carry us through early game combat. So, look around. This will be Glassblower Home, I'm assuming? Oh no, wait, those are some Forgotten Ruins. That's Alana. And that's Glassblower Home. Okay. So we wanted to go to Alana... Wait, I've already forgotten. Go to Alana to get that pie, and then go south of those ruins until you find the Snapjaw Fort. Well, let's start with the pie thing, because the pie thing probably doesn't involve a lot of combat. Yeah, I'll investigate some ruins nearby. Why not? You've discovered Arbelos Sheshen. Alright, be ready to flee from Arbelos Sheshen. We do not need to get involved in combat with anything we can't handle. But a little bit of early, like, snapjaw combat would be real good for us. And also, you know, loot. There might be books and stuff. Hmm. It's an ominous area. I'm really worried that we're going to end up not seeing whatever monster lives here until we're in melee range of it. Although, obviously, the webs are suggestive of something. Hey, you. Take that. Boy, he's... <laughs> This gun makes a very unimpressive sound when it is fired. It's maybe the smallest sound that you could still describe as a sound. Ow! I just walked right into a drill bot. Sprint away from the drill bot. So that's a that's a high difficulty enemy, right? Yeah, very tough and hostile. He's equipped with dual wailing drills. Fleeing. Maximum fleeing. Uh, he's probably lost sight of us. He doesn't know where we went. We'll have a little bit more of a look around to see if we can... Ah, I don't want to fight you. Oh, hey. A dromad. That'll probably be pretty helpful. I spotted the dromad caravan. Dear dromads, help. I'm in a little bit of a situation. Okay, they solved the situation for me. So it seems like there are some vine-spitting plants over here. If we can get vision of the vine-spitters before the dromads do, we might be able to uh, grab us a couple of kills early on here. Okay, good XP. Also, I've proven myself useful to these dromads, so hopefully they'll give me a great discount on all of their important goods. Right? Right? That's totally a thing that happens. Ooh, he does have another revolver. It's very expensive, but now we know where we could purchase another revolver if we fail to find one. Actually, pretty good information. Uh, so am I in the tile? I'm in the tile that has Alana. Okay. Now that we've now that we've seen that it's marked on our map uh, permanently, so no, not sorry, not that. I want to go to Alana, and this should just be like a friendly village where we can hang out and talk to people. Should be perfectly pleasant here. Although the second we came in, something got horribly murdered. It was a dog. The second we came in, we saw a huge horse kick a dog in half. So you know, not totally ideal. The Equimaxes that live around here are very aggressive. Very aggressive creatures. Howdy, guys. What are you doing in here? Puts a finger to her lips. Okay, apparently we're being very we're being very stealthy right now. You have some copper nuggets. You have... Ooh, a bunch of honey. You know what would be really cool is to kill those guys and take their stuff. <laughs> Just a thing to think about for later. Probably not something we could do right away. This is a glass bottle of oil... Well, I mean, I don't see anybody from the town around. We could probably just take that. No, wait, sorry. Uh, get thing north? Get. Okay, I have to stand on it to get it. I'm sure I want to take it. I am a thief when no one is looking. Okay, maybe... Oh, wait, there's a shrine up here. What is this? A shrine to Polyhim III. Scrollborn. Uh, in, in 1663 BR, Polyhim III laid waste to all of the glassblowers... Hey, we know this. We know this story. 
Look at that. I'm a learned student of history. What kind of plant is that? A seed spitter. Uh, get. That's not what I think a seed spitter looks like. Those Equimaxes are killing all kinds of salt hoppers and stuff over there. This is a very violent place. It's a good thing the, the huge horses are here to protect me. Well, where the hell would there be a pie? Also, I thought this was supposed to be a village. It basically, it seems to be a loose confederation of buildings around which many hostile horses have made their home. Uh, let's try this side. Okay. Okay, this is something. That Equimax is totally cool with us being here, I think. Just grab... The what exactly am I looking at here? Yes, I, I found it. I'm trying to look at it. Seasoning the minced meat that's trapped under the crust is a smidge of yeefer dust, shaved from the stalk of the eponymous mushroom and finely ground. The whole mushroom is much too powerful for a mammalian psyche. Consuming one would obliterate the ego in mere moments. But a smidge of dust on a tasty pie can remind one of one's place in the cosmos. It's like a tiny little bit of total perspective vortex. Uh, do not eat the humble pie. We are all about not being humble. I do like the fact that um, a lot of your ability to engage with mental mutations is just about believing that you are badass enough to be able to start a fire with your mind. Uh, near all of us, shades of our elder selves. It's a terrifying concept. I want the things those Arcanauts have so badly that I'm considering going over there and throwing a grenade in the room they're in. Ooh, free stuff. Ooh, good free stuff. All right, I'll take that. I mean, we don't want to use those weapons. I think we, we want to stick to small blades because that hobble thing is actually going to be pretty useful, I think. Uh, but we can definitely sell some of this stuff. So, I mean, we just started the character, right? If, if I try this and it goes awry, we could just bail and start a new character. They are rated as tough and they're both well armed. So if I fail to kill them, I will pay a price. Like, we could just go to right here and then try to throw a grenade such that it lands... Nah, let's not bother. The odds are too good that it won't kill them, and then they'll just chase me out and murder me. So, never mind. Um, I kind of want to go to Glassblower Home, but let's let's do our other quest first. I mean, I guess as we're passing by, we may as well just turn it in this humble pie. Uh, so... Where did... Oh, it was the Tinker, right? Was it the Tinker who wanted the Humble Pie? Yeah, I came over here because I was remembering the Warden. But I think it's your deal. I found this pure Humble Pie for you. Ah, oh, thanks, Traveler. You've proven yourself a friend to our village. It was not very difficult. Take this Recoiler and return whenever your throat is dry. Alright, so that's a lot of XP. A Recoiler with no cell in it. Fortunately, we have a cell already. Uh, and... Now he's going to ask us about Gritgate. Sure, I'll go to Gritgate. I can do that for you. Okay, so now, before we go anywhere, we have a couple of things to spend. First of all, we have a point on our character sheet here. I'm assuming we just want to go um, agility, right? Because the some of the gun stuff that we want actually has a very high agility cost. And we're not as split as we were with the last character between our concerns. I'm pretty sure I just want to spend that on agility. Okay, and then we have 236 skill points already. So I think Akimbo makes sense. Let's grab that now. And then we may as well sling and run, right? I guess the, uh, the other thing we could do is we could start in on the Wayfaring. We're going to spend a lot of time going through desert canyons right now. Travel through desert canyons twice as quickly, doubles the chance of interesting encounters. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then next time we level up, we could probably take, like, Tinker. Okay, let's do this thing. Smell roasted boar nearby. Would you like to investigate? Yes. Oh, it's a goat folk village. I am leaving. Now we know where there's a goat folk village, and that information might be useful. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Uh, I discovered a secluded workshop while trying to move. Sure, investigate. Why not? Workshop of Mukat Kiwar, the legendary glover. Uh, well, I don't see a workshop. Is it that building over Oh, no, there's a couple of buildings. Is this thing hostile? It is. Or it was. 
I said that. It was assuming that I would have killed it quickly, because I forgot we're a new character and we're not very powerful yet. Good news is we can we can really shoot a gun a lot of times very quickly. Okay, so that'll be the entrance to the workshop down there, right? Fortunately, I'm accurate enough that we're able to actually hit things from a reasonable distance. That's a nice change of pace. Uh, I'm not actually very fast when I'm not sprinting. I think I want to just stand and stand and shoot. Okay. So, you know what? Let's not worry about here. Well, I will identify the chair real quick. Let's not worry about taking Tinker just yet. Let's get down here and talk to this dude in his workshop. I can't imagine this will have any effect on the things that we, uh, the way we want to spend our skill points, but why not do this first, right? It's like, get all the information, then make the decisions. I mean, I guess I'm just going to hit auto-explore. Why not? This is probably not a high danger area, he says, right before encountering a hostile bear and also a bunch of gloves on the ground, which makes sense, you know, given the thing. Uh, well... Sprint is on cooldown, and that's a bear. Closed door? Nope, bear can open door. Oh god. I stepped away from it, and he didn't open it immediately, so I thought I was cool. But it was just a clever ruse. Ow! My cloth robe. He cracked a cloth robe that I'm wearing. I don't even understand how that works. You know what? I'm gonna shoot him, and then I'm gonna attempt the hobble. Okay, it worked. So he should not be able to follow us very effectively now, and we can shoot him a bunch more times. Hobble is like reverse sprint. Also, I'm shooting the walls a fair amount here. Uh, okay, so go upstairs. Nope, hit the wrong button there. Go upstairs. I assume he will chase us. He'll still be hobbled. Okay. It takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of pistol ammunition to put down a bear. A full-size bear. Alright, the good news is... Free gloves. Also, there's a chest here. Hold on, we gotta have a quick look around. Make sure that there's nobody watching. Looks like we can just loot this chest. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab whatever's in here. Nope, never mind. There's nothing in there. So one of these is slender. I guess I should be grabbing all of the stuff on the ground, just because right now we don't have a lot of things and we don't have a lot of trade value, and those two things are related. All right, hands. Slender leather, leather gloves. They're so light. All right, just keep an eye out for... If I hit... T okay, it does take the trash. Trash is on my... Uh, Crash is part of my get-all. I'll have to remember not to do that. I guess we'll go back into auto-explore. Hold up. Anything in here? No. Are these cool gloves? No. Somewhere in here, there's going to be a guy. Uh, we found some stuff. Oh, whoa. So the auto-explorer will just open up chests if there's anything in them. It won't open up chests if there's nothing in them, but it also won't just pick up items off the ground automatically. It's a little strange. It is nice to know, though, that we're not going to have to, um... We don't always have to manually stop it every time we see a chest. So hold on, there is a... There is a leather glove in this tile. I want to take it. I guess I could take a chest. It looks like they're not all that heavy, and maybe, maybe we could sell them? Okay, well, hold on now. So we didn't actually step on that space... I wasn't sure that there was nothing in it. Also, we met the guy, so we should have a chat with him. What we should do is, um, kill this plant first. There we go. Sappy Drenchroot. Or Dreadroot, rather. Hello, Mukatkiwar. Your thirst is mine. So merchants like us, arachnids and succulents, less so. I have a secret to share with you. I found a caravan where you could sell some gloves. Would you gift me your weird artifact, please? I'm very curious what this is. Hold on, we're gonna trade in just a moment, but first, what did you give me? Gesticulating plastifer gloves. Sorry, what? The stretchy foam fabric hardens when pressure is applied to it. Plus two strength. Grants bonus strength, but disallows the use of the floating nearby equipment slot. Because I'm, like, constantly gesticulating so wildly that I would hit a thing that was floating nearby, or... 
I'm not 100% sure why that's the case, but those are some damn nice gloves. They have, a, they have a point of dodge value and a point of armor value on them, and jeez. Well done, sir. You really know your deal. So it's hard to imagine that he's going to have anything that I might want, aside from whatever this is. At midnight under a strange and platinum sky, the people of the Observatory of the Orbital saw an image on the horizon that looked like a glass bathed in platinum. Okay. Will this tell me where the... nope. Did not tell me where the observatory was. Okay, so... I am curious about this. Given how expensive it is, it could be something real cool. It might just be the same kind of gloves we're already wearing, though. There is a little bit more exploration to do. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. Let's not just run right past the thing where there was a guy and a bear hanging out in this corner. What's the deal here? These are his hired guards. A glow-white cultist and a bark biter. Huh. Wait, bark biter? Though his ursine kinsfolk oppose gravity and chase prey up the splayed branches of trees, the bark biter knows what natural philosophers know. With some beseeching, the tree and its occupants will descend of their own accord. Huh. That's kind of fascinating. Howdy. He's <laughs> he just threatens us and then we leave, I guess. I wanted to know that guy's whole deal. What an interesting fellow. Okay, I guess we're good. He's now sleeping. I mean, I was going to say maybe we could rob him, but I, we kind of already did steal everything in his house that wasn't nailed down, so... I could take all of his chests, I suppose. Nope, that's still the wrong button. There we go. Well, I guess let's go back to what we were doing. I was going to try to get to that Dromad caravan. Not that, sorry. This... Take me to the caravan. This is the screen the caravan is on, but it is not particularly close to the caravan. Uh, can I make camp? I would like to eat whatever is around. You know, tortoise shell, rust, some dog thorn. The saddest part is the bit where it's just like, you ate a big chunk of a tree you found. That was like by far the most reasonable part of that to eat. I'll just take all this stuff. You guys aren't really doing anything with any of this. Yeah, okay. Hi, I would love that revolver that you have. If we could just make that thing happen. So that's very expensive. We actually might not have enough trade value. Uh, we do have a couple of thermal grenades. We have all these weapons. He really wants a lot for this. Uh, a big part of this, of course, is that we're just like... I didn't realize the seed spitter that we found was a weapon. I thought it was, you know, part of a seed spitter plant. Yeah, we just don't, we don't have the trade value. So hold on now. What's the story with this thing? It's a bow and rifle class item. Compacted seed matter that's been stuffed into the leaf mitt of a coiled tendril. Okay, so we wouldn't want to use it. But it's interesting, and it's something we might be willing to sell. Alright, I guess let's try to go do this other quest. So again, shoot. Bad time to get lost. There we go. Real good at regaining my bearings. I smell roasted boar nearby. Alright, fine. Is it another goat folk village? Of course, it always is. Oh, can't leave. There's a an amoeba over there, and that's a glow white. Hostile, right? Yep. Uh, Alright, well, let's go back to the other map. Can I leave now? Nope. Part of me still remembers there are hostiles nearby. I'm hoping to get to go back to the map before, uh, before those hostiles notice us. Alright, I'm going to sprint toward the map border here. Can I please go back to the world map? Hey, I discovered some forgotten ruins. <laughs> These are close to the right location, too. Was The quest was just to find forgotten ruins, right? No, the quest was to find Snap, uh, Snapjaw Fort, right? We were using some other forgotten ruins as a, um, as a landmark. We were trying to find a fort. Hi, sneaky little Naftali. Ooh, a Yuckweed's down. That's actually pretty decent loot. That might sell well. Also, we might just want to hold on to it, because getting sick seems like a real bad thing to do in this place. All of the ailments here are terrifying. But I do want to find a way into this, uh... Find a way into this ruin before we leave here. What is that? It's a hostile yonder brush. Oh, right, if we touch it, it, it teleports us around. 
Okay, well, I mean, while we're here, let's just whip up a meal. Bed rolls. I wonder... I mean, it's a still burning campfire. Someone was here recently, right? It's fine. We'll just, we'll just get this done quickly. Wow, there's a lot of angry leeches here. Let's run away. Alright, create a little bit of distance here. Are the other leeches? Yes. Yes, they are also coming. I mean, leeches are pretty good XP at this level. There's one more, wasn't there? He didn't realize I was here. Oh, it looks like he realizes now. Also, what am I seeing now? Is that a legendary disciple of the sightless way? A servant of Ptah. So, not a thing we could come anywhere close to killing. We'll just not go over that way. That's fine. We'll be fine. Oh, right, but this, I know that this is a dead end. Well, I think I'm just going to leave then, rather than trying to find a way in, because we'd have to go over to the side of that thing that that guy is on, and I obviously don't feel great about that. So that's the Goat Folk Village. All right, let's, let's go here. Let's go to the Forgotten Ruins. Oh, that's a mad pole. It's impossibly dangerous. Why would our starting quest require us to go to a place where there's a mad pole? And the damn water is making it hard for me to run away. Can they get out of water? I don't actually know. Ow! Yes! It turns out. There's just, there's a million of them! There's a million of them! What in the hell? Rest until healed? Okay. Alright, so we're just gonna go south. Zoom in here. And then... I mean, this is no way to do this. We really want to go straight south from that screen. It's just a terrifying place to be. Alright. If it's going to put me right back in the same spot, we at least won't be adjacent to the Mad Pole anymore because it chased me a little bit. So we're just going to go south from here. That Mad Pole is going to chase us, but we're pretty quick. I wish I had a uh, better move speed. I will say that. Right, let's walk on the shore. So I really do want to explore those ruins, and maybe someday we'll be able to. <laughs> so we just continue south. Many, many mad poles, but maybe as long as we stay clear of the water, they won't come after us. God, there are so many mad poles here. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> Stupid trees everywhere. How am I even going to know if I find the place? Okay, back up. How am I even going to know if I find this damn place? I mean, I guess forts aren't very small. And it looks like the mad poles will not chase us out of the water. So that one that looked like it was outside the water in the fort must have been just like on the edge of a body of water we couldn't see. Which I guess means that maybe I could just stand by and shoot them. My concern is that, first of all, they might be so tough that we'll have a hard time killing them with the amount of ammunition we have on us. And secondly, that um, dealing damage to them might provoke them to get out of the water. Right, like maybe they're maybe they're not going to chase me out onto land if I'm if I'm just passing through. But we have no guarantee that they will not do it if I uh, if I provoke them intentionally. So I've lost track of how many parasangs south of the thing we are. But I mean, we'll just go south for a while longer. And if it doesn't, if we don't encounter it, then we'll see you. I see you, Naftali, trying to be the same color as all the other sprites around here. If we don't find it, we'll just go back to the map and try to figure out what we did wrong. That's a goat folk. Uh, probably the right play is just sprint away, right? So we're. Okay, this whole area is just packed with goat folk. I'm going to see about... Nope, I'm being shot at. I was going to say I'm going to see about pushing all the way to the right edge of the screen and then going down from there. Like, if we get onto this screen, let's rest until healed. And then, hopefully over here... there. Nope, there's maybe more goat folk. Hard to say. Let's 
changing screens a bunch of times. Nope, this guy, he can totally tell where I am. I'm gonna hobble it. Hey, it worked. Run! So we're on that screen. Shotgunner on this screen. Great. Also, some Naftali. Why aren't the goats interested in killing these guys? Albino Ape, save me. Oh, he's trying. He's trying to save me. Hey, we found another shotgunner. I took 17 damage. I discovered Polyform Kalep. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. It's good that we discovered another thing that we can use as a landmark, because we are not going to want to come back here searching the same way that we did. But Polyform Kalep, of course, there's a Chitinous Puma. Polyform Kalep is near the place. So we can we can use that as a way of re-entering. Okay. There are not hostiles still nearby. Just let me just let me go back to the map. Okay, Jesus Christ. So what exactly did that quest say? This seems like a horrible thing. One to five parasangs south of some forgotten ruins. So if a parasang, I still don't actually know this. If a parasang is one screen worth of space, then we would have seen it already. So a parasang must be one map tile worth of space. And we know that map tiles are made up of multiple screens. I think it's the case that a map tile is a nine screen, like three by three area. But I'm not 100% sure. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in. Hold on. Can I rest until healed on this screen? Nope. Right, we're going to go into Polyform Caleb. I'm going to rest here. Okay. We're just going to look around here for a second, because I'm kind of curious what pol Polyform Caleb actually is. It might be just packed with chitinous pumas. Oh, also, we didn't actually spend those skill points. I was like, hey, let's explore this guy's lair first. So what level are we? We are level 5, 1150 until the point where we get a whole bunch of free skill point or free stat points, which would be nice. And we could pick up some new pistol skills. Whenever you score a hit with a pistol, you have a chance to disarm your opponent. Actually seems real good. That's the thing we don't even have to ac uh, activate, it just happens. Uh, we'd like to not be using our short blade all that much. Short blade attacks that have a that penetrate have a chance to cause a bleed. I think at this point we probably want to grab um, tinkering. I think I would like to have tinkering early on a character for a change. So next time we level up, we'll get enough skill points to pick up tinker or disassemble or maybe both. I haven't actually paid attention to how many points we're getting on each level up. All right, but that, that pistol skill we took just now may actually be relevant. Oh, graffiti. Aside from the different parts of... Aside from the different parts are unscrewed, they fit into a thicket, dark with shade. It's like, uh, it's like quantum poetry all over again. All right, I killed the kudzu. Hooray. Don't like kudzu. Also, it's worth a very small amount of XP. I guess it's probably actually probably actually not worth the ammo that we're spending. I gotta remember, this character feels like the laser character because we have a functional ranged attack, but we do not have infinite ammo like the laser character. I hate the vegetation here. I hate the, the incredibly low visibility. Oh, I accidentally shot the tree that's standing next to us. I shot it so hard it stopped existing. Why can I not hit this damn kudzu? Hmm. Okay, albino ape. Friendly albino ape. Why is that kudzu glowing? Yeah, I just I can't seem to hit it for some reason. That kudzu atta is attacking that ape, and for some reason the ape's not fighting back. I want to help him, but I'm leery of accidentally shooting him, which would certainly kill us. Okay, that one we killed. I hate this area. This area sucks so much. Oh my god. It's all, it's all just like abbreviated sightlines and kudzu as far as the eye can see. And stupid non-traversable trees. 
Okay, I am able to hit stuff over fences. We've never actually tried that before. I mean, it makes sense, right? But not a thing we knew was useful, or was doable. So it's impossible to access anything. You know, I'm just getting out of here. This sucks. All right, let's try going in here. Is this a sensible? So this would be one, two, three, four. This would be five screen lengths south. Okay, I, d I decided that we would just start searching at the southmost, southmost screen, <laughs> and apparently that was the fort. Well, lucky us. Alright, this is the part where we get tons of garbage items for free. Listen, I'm not trying to hate on garbage items. The core of our early game economy is built on them. Okay, apparently we're going to have to approach from a different angle here. Oh, that chameleon actually did totally sneak up on me. His thing worked. Alright, the hobble is actually pretty effective. We are, we are routinely getting the hobble off. Would you stop... Do salamanders get mad with get mad at you when you fight chameleons? Maybe because they're like, "Hey, that guy's also a lizard." Uh, we'll sprint away from you. Give me some distance. Apparently, it's yeah, it's waiting Beetle Moon right now. It's too dark for me to be able to see him when I'm more than like one tile away. Hey, buddy, maybe you could actually die. He's still fine. I'm not hitting him at all. Yeah, see, you hit the shale, like. For some reason, I can't seem to hit this damn boar. Well. Reload. Nope, he's definitely still hitting me. Okay, uh, I can hobble him now. We've definitely got that off cooldown. It'd be really cool if you would die. Okay. 12 XP for all that. Come on. All this work, and I get such tiny, tiny amounts of XP for it. Why are boars so low XP? They're actually remarkably tough enemies although that one went down quickly it was was the other one just like I'd never hit it I mean I guess that must be the case but why that's a salt hopper we should be very good at hitting enemies right uh, my gloves got hit but I did hobble him right I keep in mind that's gonna mean a different thing with him than it means with a lot of enemies because he's real fast He's very close to dead. Okay. I mean, he had to be. My gloves are okay, though, right? They got cracked? Okay. That's cool. They will just repair naturally over time. We've seen it many times before. Uh, reload. Nope, I'm out of bullets. Well, that's no good. We'll take a look around. I mean, we can fight with our steel dagger a little bit, and snap jaws are very weak. So we'll take a look around here and we'll just try to be careful uh, a short sword is a small blade this is five penetration 1d4 sword that we picked up is okay the same actually never mind no reason to change anything up well that's not great we can fight the little ones blue guy here I'm a little bit more worried about Let's hobble him and run. Missed. Shoot. I will sprint. Him I will spend bullets on. I hit the Snapjaw Hunter with that first shot. I managed to miss the Warlord entirely, but I think I probably hit that Hunter hard enough to kill him. And it looks like I missed the Warlord with that shot as well and killed the Scavenger. Now we're just out of ammo, so I have to decide, do I think I can take him? Yes. Yes, I do. We're going to see if this is the case. I accidentally killed the two guys who are following him, so it really is just us and him. He seems to be having a hell of a time hitting me. I'm too dodgy. Okay, I mean, that works out. We got some random snapjaw garbage. That's not what I wanted. Loot. Like, picking up the stuff on the ground is a weird number of... Uh, button presses that have to happen in a certain order if you're wondering how I am still all the time pressing the wrong button. Okay, so we definitely got a weird artifact at some point during that. Also, here's a bunch of stuff, but none of it's what we're looking for. Yeah, give me all of it. Oh, I guess what we're looking for was just the, sh was just the place. We're not trying to find any loot here. An electrified staff. Okay, so we're just going to drop some armor. 
I'm gonna drop six pairs of leather gloves, I think. These are probably not that valuable, right? There we go. Okay. Uh, back to the caravan? Did we buy all of the ammo from the caravan guy? I don't think we did. Also, I may as well cook at my campfire again. Not gonna worry about this this particular seed spinning plant. Because we bought all of the bullets. Yeah, we bought all the bullets from the Dromad in the hometown. Uh, let's trade him some torches. As few torches as we can get away with here. Oh, wait, that's not how you do that. There we go. Okay, reload gun. And then, actually, you know, what am I doing? This this is the guy I want to talk to. This is the guy I want to trade all this garbage to. We might be able to generate enough value now for that second revolver. Although, to be perfectly honest with you, are we going to be able to have enough ammo for both of these guns? Who can say? This is a lot of stuff, though. I don't think we have any interest in holding on to the electrified staff. Really? That's only 80... man. I have all of this stuff. You don't want my folding chair? That's fine. So that's still... it's like 180, right? 178, yeah. Jesus. Well, we could sell him some of our injectors, I suppose? I mean, what are the odds that I'm going to use them? I have a glow sphere. We could sell him all of our torches. I don't want to carry these torches around. We have a couple of thermal grenades. None of this stuff sells for anything. Yeah, we could make it some injectors. Like, if I sell him one blaze injector... I might want to hold on to my salve, though. Salve is pretty valuable. God, it is really hard to get a second gun. And then as soon as we buy one, we're going to find one somewhere. Uh... We have, like, no water. So we can't just make this up in water. Yeah, this is just real tough. This is this is the uh, the big downside of having low ego here. Uh, I get, It's going to have to be more injectors. I don't really need the shade oil. Honestly, I'm not really a Hulk honey guy either. And we'll give him one salve injector. And then he has to pay me one entire dram of water. I mean, I'll take it. We need that second revolver. I don't feel great about it, but I think it is important. It, yeah, that's weird. It just didn't put it in the other slot. It replaced the uh, it replaced the revolver I was already holding. Very strange choice. Okay, so if we go back here, oh, I got lost. There you go. You regain your bearings very quickly. I don't see any hostiles. Apparently some hostiles see me. I think it might just be mistaken about there being hostiles nearby. I don't... that doesn't seem true. Oh. Baboon. Well, this is kind of unfair, because it basically just made me walk until there were hostiles nearby. It's sort of self-fulfilling there. There we go. Uh, some ruins nearby. Sure, let's go check it out. Very, very difficult to get places. Alright, so we got some boars. I'm gonna let the boar get close, then shoot it, so that we actually kill it. See a chameleon? I did see a chameleon. Okay, 118 skill points. Is that... Yeah, that's a little bit short of getting us both Disassemble and Tinker 1. Well, I don't think we need Tinker 1 right this second, I guess. Disassemble will uh, potentially save us some some carry weight, though. Seems wise. And speaking of disassemble, saving me carry weight. Disassemble. Okay. So that's a big scary monkey. Hulking baboon has thrown a for real actual boulder at us. Well, every time I see a bookshelf, I get excited. That's a grenade of some kind. Freeze grenade. Okay, possibly a useful grenade. 
Yeah, every time I see a bookshelf, I get excited that we are about to find a bunch of books. It's just like a huge amount of free trade value. Something this character could desperately use. What kind of gun are you? You are merely a musket turret. I'm going to try to kill it. Okay, because we need the ammo. Also, the XP. It's a fair amount of XP. Like, honestly, if that had been a laser turret or something, I probably wouldn't have fought it, and most mostly for the reason that we wouldn't have gotten any ammo out of it. Okay, what's in this chest? A small stone that is not actually a small stone. It is actually a Joppa recoiler. Oh, that's interesting. Do we think Joppa really exists? Hasn't it been the case so far that when we play a version of this thing... Oh, I can actually see that already. I thought it was a tree. That when we play a version of the game where we don't start in Joppa, Joppa has just been ruins? I mean, it might be the case here. For all we know. Oh, great. Tortoise. You know, I'm just going to avoid the tortoise. I see no reason to fight him. I do not I do not sense that there is any benefit to fighting him. With our pistols, we're going to have such a hard time actually penetrating the, the shell. This is weird. Where does this take us? To a place where there are many snapshots. It's just like a door connecting to open air areas, which is... I mean, I guess it's very cud, but it's, it still feels weird every single time I see it. It's gonna run away from you. Okay, so nothing terribly interesting. We can fight these little guys without having to spend any bullets. Ammunition is gonna be, like, very much at a premium for this character. I think probably pretty much forever. Ooh, that guy's corpse is valuable. Uh, what is this? Flaming Bronze Short Sword. Well, okay, I don't want it, but I am happy to have it. And what is the deal with this thing? Seen from the life of Polyhem III. One night under the beetle moon in the gambler's quarter of Ibiruk, a healthy child was born to the Sultan at Shapur Cave. At the moment of her birth, a college was founded, and in celebration, the people drank themselves into stupors. That's not really about celebration, they just wanted to do that, you can tell. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, give me... Grab this short sword, and then... Uh-oh. What is this? Oh, I've been defoliated. Oh no, all of my plant life. I'm being kind of glib about that, but I do I do now... I do now know the history of defoliants being used in, uh, in war, and how that actually is, like, real bad news. I learned something from this game. Or b because of this game, I guess. Not really directly from it. Okay, well, I don't really want to fight you, Tortoise. Can I please just leave? Nope. Apparently, it is felt that there are hostels nearby. Okay, how about now? Okay. I don't think that we're going to get anything from going back to Tylatum, right? We found the fort. I guess, do I need to bring the information about the fort back home? You I dealt with already. Uh, the guy who wanted to know about the fort was up here, right? Hopefully he hasn't moved. He has moved! Oh no, I've been betrayed. Uh, do you want any information? Yes. I'll tell the wardens about all of the goat folk villages. Perhaps go forth and deal with them. Because I don't know if you know this, but there's kind of a lot of goat folk around here, and it's a huge bummer. They keep trying to murder me with bombs. Well, shoot, where did, there he is. Oh, he was just, he was napping. Now he has returned to his post. I did locate the Snapjaw Fort. Okay, so there was a good reason to come back. Uh, do we want a bioscanning bracelet, a sphinx salt injector, a sol- Oh, a solar cell would be nice. What is a hover sled? I mean... I mean, we gotta take the, sover sl the hover sled, right? I don't have any idea what it does. Obviously, we need that. What's a hover sled for? Also, at some point... Oh, no, that's the hover sled, okay. It's a, tob a toboggan repels above the ground and gently rocks on an ethereal wave. It's encircled by a corona of wafting dust, so it's an equipable. I mean, equip. What did it do? Oh, it's floating nearby. So wait, what is it? Okay, it has n minus 50 pounds worth of weight as long as it is equipped. But that means I lose my gesticulating plastifer gloves, which are cool. That said, they do only give plus two strength. 
Hmm. We have a... Uh, we don't really have a lot of equipment here. I mean, I'm not going to put this on. It's just minus stats. I'm going to keep my hover sled around. I'm going to re-equip my gloves right now. Okay. I can't. I can't just do that the way that makes sense. It doesn't know that I want to remove this. We'll keep these around, and then we'll uh, we'll swap in the hover sled when it makes sense. For now, I will keep these gloves on, because they're pretty good. Okay, and then... I guess we're kind of out of stuff to do for the moment. We have 13 drams of fresh water. We have a little bit of trade value on us. But at this point, we would just basically like go wander and explore, right? And that is totally what we will do next time, tomorrow. I'm hoping that we're on the start here of a character who is going to be able to survive a little bit better. We've been making lots of, um, we've been seeing a lot of cool and interesting things, and I'm still having fun just wandering around Cud. But I have to admit, even though that's true, there's part of me that just like so desperately wants to get into Golgotha and see what the hell is going on down there. And the fact that we're having such a hard time uh, is absolutely sort of like building up the myth of the place in my mind. So... Part of me wants to get into it as soon as possible, just so that I don't build it up too much and then be end up disappointed when we finally get in there. I don't know. I guess I'll try not to worry about it too much. When you come back next time, tomorrow, we will wander and get into adventures like that dude from Kung Fu, except with a lot of pistols. And we'll see you then.